good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's session which is a live interview with the Mayor's Fund for London as part of the University of Greenwich's Careers in Charities Week. Uh, so today I'll be interviewing three professionals who are either engaged with or employed by the Mayor's Fund for London about their experiences working within this charity but also the sector in more general terms. The Mayor's Fund for London are a charity that champions opportunities for young Londoners from low income backgrounds and they do so by focusing on three key areas which are well-being, skills and employment and enterprise. So without further ado I'd like to start today's interview and just to repeat so please note that this session is being recorded and it will be published on the University of Greenwich's um, employability YouTube playlist so bear that in mind later on when we start asking questions. So the first question that I've got for our panellists is, please could you introduce yourselves? So tell us your name, the title of the role that you're working with at the Mayor's Fund for London. Yeah. So who would like to go first? Yeah. <laughs> you go, go first. Hi everyone, um, my name's Belle, and so I work at the Mayor's Fund for London as a project officer, and I work on delivering the Mayor's Entrepreneur Programme. I can go next. Um, I'm Susanna. I am a current final year student at Greenwich and I'm a mayor's entrepreneur intern. And I'm Kate and uh, I'm a youth board member uh, with Amatel and uh, I'm also an employability champion here at the University of Greenwich. Um, just to pick up on those, so Kate, could you tell us a little bit more about what being a youth board member actually entails in terms of the, the work that you do? Yes, absolutely. So um, I started being on the youth board uh, from last September and uh, basically um, it's a group of individuals. So the board consists of a mix of ages ranging from 16 to 24. And we are all at different stages in, the, in our education and employment. And we have very diverse lives experiences. Um, and from that on, um, we meet every month to uh, discuss our ideas and then basically voice young Londoners views and ideas. Thank you. Um, so you've kind of covered this a little bit, so I'll move on to either Belle or Susanna. Um, but how did you first hear about and become involved with the Mayor's Fund for London? And can you share a little more detail about your role? So we've got your titles, but could you flesh it out a little bit for us, please? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been working at Mayor's Fund for London for sort of around seven to eight months. Um, and so my role involved delivering two arms of the Mayor's Entrepreneur Programme. So the first um, wing um, is the competition, which invites sort of London's university students to submit a sustainable business idea that sort of contributes to making London cleaner, cleaner greener and ready for the future. Um, so I also organise a sort of series of workshops that students come to attend um, to see if they think that entrepreneurship is a viable career path. And the second sort of arm of the programme is supporting um, London student, students in the form of internships. So we have around 30 interns at the moment um, and I sort of organise and manage them. Do you want to go next? Yeah, so um, I first heard about the competition um, and not the internship. So when I heard about the competition, I was in my second year um, and it was during my lectures. So someone came to do a shout out. Um, I didn't apply back then because my business wouldn't fit into like the categories. But a few months later, I received like an email from the generator, which is our enterprise hub at the uni about the internship. And that might be applied straight away since I study entrepreneurship. And I do want to have my own business, so I thought it would be quite fitting. Um, and my role, so my internship involves promoting the competition to students at my university. So um, I did lecture shout outs, spoke at events, and this started in October. So this is like a six month internship ending um, in April. There also, there's also different working groups, so I'm part of two, um, the case studies group and then the social media groups. So in the case studies group, we worked um, to interview previous winners, write blog posts, create graphics for them. And then for the social media group, we um, also make the content 
and post on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I was mostly involved in the Instagram um, part of things and also did some improvements to the account. Brilliant, thank you so much. And could you just tell us what your business is, please? Susanna, sorry. Um, so currently I have a blog um, that I'm working on right now in my final year as well as part of like my business creation project. Um, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. No, that's really interesting because I think you've got that pathway of getting in touch with the generator and being engaged with them and then hearing about the competition and then landing your internship as part of that pathway. So I think that's a really interesting kind of um, framework to, to get to where you are now. Um, so thank you all very much. So the next question is that MFL focuses on three key areas, well-being, skills and employment and enterprise, as we've talked about briefly. Can you each tell me a little bit more about these three areas and how this features in your work and how the MFL focuses on improving investment and opportunities within these areas? It's quite a big question. So if you want me to repeat any of that, just let me know. Fine. And do you want us to sort of talk about each of them or just take one each? Take one each, actually. That might yeah. be a good a good okay. way to do it. So I, I'm happy to go first. So I... Um, obviously work on the Mayor's Entrepreneur Programme. So I sort of, with the, the sort of main area that I focus on delivering is employment at the enterprise. I know that there's a lot of other programmes like Access Aspiration um, in the Mayor's Fund for London that also sort of focuses on this key area. Um, and so what we sort of do broadly um, in terms of employment at enterprise is we try our best to increase awareness of employability opportunities, ensure that people are sort of aware of the skills needed to sort of get there. Um, and we sort of do this from, you know, 15, 16 year olds, all up to sort of, you know, 24 plus. Um, we, yeah, we, so we really do try and prepare people for sort of the next stage of their life when they're going to get into roles and make sure they realise that, you know, it is accessible for everyone. Um, yeah, and how they can sort of better access employers. And what was the other part of the question? Sorry, I couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, no worries at all. So it was um, how the Mayor's Fund for London focuses on improving investment and opportunities in this area. So I think you've kind of covered that a little bit, but was there anything else you wanted to add to that? Uh, no, that's, that's, that's good. Okay. One question that I would ask would be, um, because this is an area that is constantly developing, so employment and skills, there's always new opportunities coming up and new challenges. What would you say is the one of the biggest barriers or challenges that you face in, in making that such a crucial focus? I think one of the biggest barriers is actually engagement. Um, engagement from sort of you know, students and people. Sometimes they don't realise that resource is out there or they don't feel like they can access it. So I think that is a really big challenge for us is sort of ensuring that everyone knows that this is an opportunity for them. That's great. Thank you. Um, Kate, would you like to speak next? Um, yeah, sure. So I think I can talk about a little bit of um, the well-being side of things and also kind of the opportunities uh, in terms of employment as well. So, um, you know, the you know, the whole reason that we have this youth board uh, is is kind of the co-creation uh, that MFL is, you know, saying over and over and over again. So we're co-creating something bigger. So, for example, one of the uh, projects that I was involved with this year was um, co-creating the Diversity Pledge, which is basically holds MFL accountable for involving the youth board in meaningful decision making. And also measuring success is a big part of that. So, you know, in terms of uh, kind of what Val was talking about, engagement. So, you know, our youth board, how are we engaging? And then, you know, how, what kind of opportunities are we involved with? So I think what MFL does really, really well is uh, is co-creating that. Uh, it's not just, you know, MFL saying something, but then also co-creating that with the youth board and, and involving us with every single decision making, what, you know, around the youth board. Um, and, and I think that's really, really important. So I think those of our opportunities 
from NFL um, and, and then well being is, is really important part of that as well uh, you know we check in with each other uh, you know every meeting just to make sure we are you know well uh, not just uh, not just being there physically but then also uh, being there mentally uh, so you can really focus on that so it, it's been a wonderful experience. That's really interesting and just as you were talking I was thinking about how um, the input that you would have through the youth board and that knock on effect that that your decision making and your holding holding decision makers to account would have on the well-being of the young people of London as well. Um, so is there anything that you could say about that, about how your input and your engagement with the board can then have that impact on the young, young Londoners that the Mayor's Fund for London helped to support? Yes, absolutely. So there was another, I think, a really, really good example here uh, that we worked uh, with the Kitchen Social. So one of part, one of the parts of uh, Mayor's Fund for London, um, and what they do is um, they make um, ready to eat meals or like um, kind of, I would say, uh, like a hello fresh kind of situation in terms of you have uh, everything in one package in terms of all the basic ingredients and then you can take it home and then you cook it so for example uh they came to the youth board uh, the social uh social kitchen the uh, kitchen social um uh, parts of mayor's Fund for london came to the youth board and asked um you, they gave us these packages different kind of recipes in them and uh, they asked us to make it and give feedback on is this something that you would be you know is there any, enough information in the recipe and the and the, you know the instructions uh, is it you know the food size the portion the, the the ingredients everything is it is it something that is working and we have to like, write like a whole list and things of like you know anything from the packaging uh, the instructions uh, anything from uh, you know making it were there any difficulties where there any any information missing that would have been nice and I think you know we feed this back and then they can take this away in terms of uh, you know make those changes so I think uh, you know, obviously we've done that not that too not, not too long ago so probably they're not in a place yet in terms of our feedbacks but um, I think that's just such a good example of how they try to involve us every single opportunity that they have. Yeah, that sounds that's a great example. So it's kind of having that genuine co-creation um, and and taking that feedback on board. So not just having it as um, lip service, really speaking with young people who who would would have the, the understanding of what would be beneficial um, and using that feedback to really improve the service that is provided. Thank you, Kate. Um, Susanna, did you have anything that you wanted to add in terms of well-being, skills or employment and enterprise? Yeah, so um, as an intern, I think the entrepreneur intern program is a really great way for students to get employment experience um, while learning a lot of skills. So there's a lot of skills like communication and teamwork and public speaking and time management, which are really useful in the workplace and in my future career as well. And also like the intern positions, having like a lot of them every year increases the opportunity for more students to take part. So I think that's another great um, thing that the mayor's fund does um, in terms of like, increasing opportunities. So they make it like there's a lot of the positions and they all like so that everyone has like a chance to um, experience the internship. Perfect, thank you. Um, so my next question is, did you have previous experience working with the charity sector before joining Mayor's Fund for London? If so, please tell us a little bit more. Um, and if you didn't, Please tell us a little bit about your experience so far working with this sector. Um, so who would like to go first? Um, do you want to go first? Yeah, I can go first. So um, yeah. I've been working at the Students' Union um, at Greenwich since September 2021. So that's a bit of experience um, in the charity sector. So I started as a global ambassador and then I was promoted to team leader. Um, and then shortly after I started my internship at the Mayor's Fund. So I've been in charities pretty much my entire like university experience. Um, yeah. And how have you how have you found gaining experience in the charity sector alongside studying? It's definitely challenging to like balance everything, but that's another skill that I've gained is like time managing all of the projects that I'm working on. Um, but I definitely like it. It's all really very flexible and gives me a lot of um, 
experience in the workplace as well. And later on, I can talk about my future goals as well, but it all basically is charities. <laughs> so, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, Kate, did you want to go next? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I had a bit of a journey in terms of, uh, you know, I was saying with Susanna as well, uh, with uh, the charity sector. So in my first year at university, I joined uh, Reach Out, which is another charity organization based on mentoring. So we go actually into the classrooms to help uh, students who may, might be struggling in terms of uh, their studies or just uh, their confidence. Uh, so we go in there every week and uh, it was uh, like a five or six months program uh, that we do. So I was doing that last year. Um, and it, it was absolutely amazing to see for me personally of, of how the you know how the charity sector really really helps and uh, obviously with young people um, as well so that was a great experience that I had but then obviously for a second year I had a little bit more commitment with university and a couple of other things so I was really looking to still make an impact because that was you know very important from the start for me to make an actual impact and, and you know, be on the ground kind of um, so for my for my my second year at university for this year uh, I, I joined the youth board with with MFL um, and I think there's just so many myths uh, around the charity sector when it when it comes uh, when it comes to the sector uh, which is quite sad and um, <laughs> when I started working with you know multiple charities at this point uh, I realized how, like the you know opportunities the positions they're just so varied and diverse uh, and you know kind of you know the flex flexibility that we were talking about about uh, but then also just you know the, the position the kind of positions that you have you know in the beginning I thought it's only you know maybe just marketing or, or fundraising but it's so much more than that and and I think it really shows especially being on the youth board with MFL it just really shows that you can be involved in so many things like you know cre creating recipes um, so for me that was a truly learning experience uh, to see that. Thank you and just to follow up on that do you feel that your experience volunteering and being engaged in the youth board has been really, really impactful in terms of understanding the the different variety of career career opportunities within the sector. Yes, definitely. So one thing um, that we do with the youth board is when we started, so basically from the first week on or first month on, we um, had all parts of MFL and so all of the different departments in to come in and, and explain a little bit about what they do. So, uh, you know, they would come in and, and, you know, explain that. So we have a broader understanding of their roles and not just, um, you know, what does the charity do in, in terms of its mission, but what does the charity do in terms of people? in that in the organization so that you know we you know every month we've been doing that and uh, uh you know understanding uh, different departments and and you know i think being exposed to so many different departments you know really <laughs> broadened my perspective in terms of all the different kind of positions that i was as i said never thought i would uh would see in the charity sector so it, it's been truly uh an uh, important experience for me and just to go back to a little bit about impact i think um you know being on the youth board and obviously mentoring is quite two different things uh, in terms of impact because one you're delivering impact right you know in front of you and with the youth board I think it's a longer term thing uh, but I do think we're still making a lot of important impact especially in MFL and, and kind of providing that uh, you know the voice of London's youth. Brilliant thank you. Um, Belle did you want me to repeat the question because I know that was a little it was a while yeah, ago now. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Um, so did you have any previous experience working within the charity sector before joining Mayor's Fund for London? If so, could you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, sure. So before um, working for Mayor's Fund for London, I was sort of doing my master's. So alongside that, I worked for a charity. I worked at Stepney City Farm, which sort of involved delivering education and food programmes um, and working with sort of more uh, people from low income backgrounds, people with disabilities, sort of educating people on the importance of living sustainably, but also sort of as a way of sort of therapy for them and um, sort of explore you know, who they are, what they are and what they like doing. It just sort of was a bit of breath, breath of fresh air for them. Um, it was a fantastic opportunity and I would really recommend anyone to do it it was really sort of easy to do alongside my masters um 
and then there are several days that you can sort of go and maybe volunteer if you'd like to and it's just a really fantastic opportunity and it's a really good sort of stepping stone into seeing what charities do whilst also actually having quite a lot of fun amazing thank you and i think that um brings us quite nicely onto the next question which is what skills do you think, what kind of skills do you think are required to work for a funding charity like Mayor's Fund for London? And how do these differ from the skills required to work in frontline roles? So I think broadly speaking, there are a lot, of, there are quite a lot of skills that actually, you know, are applicable to both. Um, but I'll, st I'll start with those that are sort of you know, applicable to both. So I think organisation and time management is so, so important. You know, you often find yourself working to deadlines and working on different elements of programmes or, you know, you're, you're helping write different applications for funding. So it's very, very important that you sort of spread your time evenly to ensure that, you know, all tasks are completed to the highest level. Um, the next one is probably patience and enthusiasm. I think patience is so, so important within the charity. One thing you will come to realise and one thing I will let you know now if you're thinking about doing it is that things do take time, um, especially within the charity sector. So when you're sort of relying on funding from external sources and you know, applications, you know, you're not everyone's priority. You have to really learn that, but you've got to stick with it and the good things will come, I promise eventually you've just got to wait and um, enthusiasm is really also really really important it is so so fundamental that you are enthusiastic and passionate about the charity you're working for and its goals and I think that being like that allows you to really really become invested and it just encourages you to just you know continue and make such a big difference and um, I think one more sorry if I'm speaking too much is um teamwork I think within the charity sector is such a big thing. You will find yourself, even if you do focus on individual tasks, you will find yourself working with others on programmes to reach a common goal. And um, this makes it so, so important to sort of engage and communicate effectively with others to ensure that sort of a level of fluidity is maintained. I think that's really important. Um, the one skill that I think is quite important mainly for sort of fundraising side of things is networking just like in the corporate world you know networking is really important the same applies for the charity sector fundamentally charities rely and need money to make a difference and for them to sort of work really effectively and establishing Continuously establishing relationships with, you know, partners, companies, organisations is so, so important because this funding is, you know, essential. Um, so I would just say jumping on any opportunity to network is really, really important. Brilliant. Thank you. And I uh, just as you were talking, I was thinking about the idea of impact and the fact that impact, regardless if you're frontline or organisational or developmental, impact does have that time frame with it. Um, so you're not going to have that immediate impact or you might do in some circumstances, but there, it's a long lasting, particularly if you're working on specific programmes where there are aims and you have a certain level of number of years through which that funding is spread. You can manage that impact throughout, but it's all about waiting for it to be to be meaningful. Um, Kate, did you want to go next? And let me know if you want me to repeat the question. <laughs> no, well, that's all right. It's about skills, I, uh, if I uh, remember correctly. Yeah, um, but I mean, Val, I mean, you went through uh, quite a lot of skills and I think all of them are so valid and then I feel the same in a lot of cases. But I think in, in respect to the youth wars, I would say a communication and, and also like the time management organisation of that. Um, 
And then also, uh, I loved when you mentioned patience, uh, because it, that's what we, you know, sometimes, and especially, you know, there are quite a few of us in terms of on the youth boards and, uh, the, you know, a lot of sometimes opposing views, but, you know, we have to be able to talk about them and, and you know, openly and transparently, uh, and, you know, judgment is, is, there is no place for judgment. There is no pay, uh, place for uh, being impatient with one another, because that's what we're here for, to talk about them. So, um, so I think these, I mean, all of them, what you've <laughs> said, Biri, Obviously, I do 100% agree with, uh, but I think in terms of youth boards, um, the communication and also, you know, developing that communication skills and also, you know, MFL giving um, the opportunities to, you know, speak on certain events. Uh, and um, I know a couple of us had the opportunity to go and talk to some of the the companies uh, MFL is involved with to uh, talk about how to attract diverse, uh, you know, young, diverse talent uh, and, you know, how to do that. So, you know, having those speaking opportunities, uh, you know, developing those skills uh, is just the forefront of what we do. Perfect. Thank you, Kate. Susanna, did you want to go next? Yeah, um, I can agree with um, everything you all said and just to expand a bit on the communication side. Um, so in my internship, I think communication is a really important skill to have because we need to report to a lot of different people. So the project officers like Val and then also the different team members because we have teams. We have senior interns who like are the team leaders of a small group. We also have the small group leaders like the case studies groups or the social media groups that I'm a part of. And then also keeping in um, um, communication with the lecturers and other staff members that we're promoting the competition to um, and arranging the shout outs and events that we're speaking at. So generally like communication, I think is a really big skill that's important, but that's also like improved throughout the internship and generally like the work. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, I think I can see coming through from all of you as well as there's that need to have those coordination skills. And I guess that comes with organisation, but speaking to different people, maintaining those networks and making sure that you're keeping on top of everything. It all comes into that coordination, which is vital for so many different careers um, and it's so transferable to different settings as well. Um, so our next question is for any students who are interested in becoming involved with the Mayor's Fund for London or similar charities while studying and beyond their graduation, what advice would you give to those students? Um, we will start with you, Susanna. I think it's important to choose one to work for if you have the option to choose whatever you want to work for. Um, is to choose a charity that you're really passionate about. Um, like for me, the internship is about entrepreneurship and that's something that I really care about and that I'm really interested in. So it just gives me that extra like passion um, to do my best and not just do like the bare minimum, but also like, get involved. Um, for example, getting involved in two working groups was my personal choice. I could have just done one, but I decided to do two just to take the opportunity um, and because of my involvement, I was also able to ask for references for future jobs. I was able to get opportunities like speaking at this panel or speaking on other panels that I've done so in the generator. So generally just choosing one that you're passionate about so that you can give that extra bit, like so that you can go the extra mile and not just do the bare minimum because you're going to get out of it what you kind of put in, I think. So that would be my advice. I think that's really great advice as well, because, yeah, as you said, if you are particularly studying alongside university, you want something that's going to keep that momentum going and that you're going to be really interested in and passionate about um, and that you're going to get get that that um, outcome out of that you can then take forward into into a similar career or something related. Um, Kate, did you want to go next? Yeah, so um, I think, you know, if, if you're interested in the charity sector, it, you know, it doesn't have to be Mayor's Fund for London, but any charity, I really do recommend you just to go out into your own community and look around, you know, your, your own borough, uh, your own community and, and see what, what is there to get involved with. Or if you have like a really clear idea of, you know, I, I'm interested in this and I really want to uh, uh, do more in that, uh, then, you know, go on LinkedIn, find those people who are already doing those roles and just, you know, it doesn't have to be your 
your whole career. It could be, you know, just something that you do next to university. And I think there's, you know, two important points to, to point out uh, for me as well when I um, started working with charities. One is obviously your personal goal and personal mission of, of making an impact uh, if that's what you want to do. And then also in terms of employability, and I just have to speak on this just because I do work for the employability office and um and, you know, one of the experts is, is, is quite important. Like, uh, you know, when you go for, for those graduate roles during those internships and all of that, uh, when people and, you know, hiring managers, uh, recruiters see that, uh, that you've, you know, you went above and beyond, uh, you know, you, you've done more than just your degree, um, then they will be, you know, they will see that, that you are a good candidate. And, and you know, you have all those skills that we just, uh, we just talked about, you know, from organization to communication to presentation. And, you know, as, uh, Libby was saying uh, that those are all very transferable skills that you can you know then go on uh, to your uh, to your you know selected industry and then you can just say yeah I've, you know I've been there and done all of these um, and then you know they will uh, see that uh, that you know you went above and beyond in terms of your university and your extracurricular activities so it does really really help and you know goes a long way and you're also making an impact uh, in people's life uh, and you know uh, I do recommend <laughs> Mayor's Fund for London and we will be starting recruitment for um for the youth board shortly um so so i do recommend you know coming on board uh you know and you know voicing your ideas and you know you don't have to have it all figured out i think that's really really important even if you're just interested you don't have you know you don't have to have like a clear plan of like okay this is what i'm doing after graduation and this is what i'm doing next but just you know have a bit of um you know like I guess t take a bit of time to explore take a bit of time to look around you and see what else can you get involved with and you know maybe that's going to be you know your lane and that's where you know where you want to be and you find your real passion and that's amazing or maybe you're not but um I think you know all of these experiences all the right and all the wrongs uh you know lead you to your path so um uh, I do recommend getting involved <laughs> Thanks, Kate. I think, again, that's a really good experience, particularly for anyone who is studying and looking to gain that experience alongside their studies. Um, one thing I would say is that yeah, volunteering might not be possible or accessible for everyone, but there are ways, there are opportunities that have less um, intense commitment hours. Um, but there are also lots and lots of modules within lots of programmes within Greenwich because we have such a high employability focus that have work experience built into those. And that might be somewhere where you could think, oh, this is where I want to get experience with a charity that I've um, done a bit of research in and which I would like to maybe build a career in this area that's an opportunity to use that work experience hours that are integral to th those modules to getting that experience and then using that for your employability in the future and to give back and fulfill a personal goal um, so Abel I'll come to you next yeah I think it all put it really really nicely but I think if there's one thing that I can add which I would say always know that there is absolutely no harm in getting in contact with the charity directly if they don't have you know all these listed opportunities nothing is lost if you just drop someone an email and just say hi i'm really interested in in your charity would there ever be any sort of chance to do some work experience or get involved in any way i can i would really really urge you to do that yeah, another great piece of advice, because I know from my um, pre previous student facing role, I always used to suggest that to students, particularly if they were looking for work experience. And there was this misconception that that would be irritating for the charity or that they would never hear back from the charity. And the chances are sometimes you might not hear back, but you may hear back from one that you're really interested in. So as Bell said, there's there's nothing to lose in reaching out directly. Um, OK, thank you, everyone. So our next question is, what do you think is the biggest myth about the charity sector? I will start with Kate for this one. All right. Well, uh, if I can do like a little personal plug, I guess, um, on the, your student portals, uh, I did write a little um, article about misconceptions in the charity sector. So I'll put I the link in now. Like to <laughs> <laughs> please, please do please do um so uh, you know if you have a little bit of time please read that uh, it's all about those misconceptions but I think you know during my research when I was doing that article um the you know one of the biggest ones and I think I mentioned this already but the positions of labelable um you know I literally thought it's only you know marketing and fundraising and you know all of that 
but it's so much more and so much more diverse than you would think and that you know and also another very important one is that there are graduate opportunities in the sector uh and you know it, it took me a little you know research to realize that that you can actually do you know a graduate program uh to go into a charity sector and um we had a lovely interview uh, with somebody from uh, the Bexley uh, Community Hospice, Greenwich Bexley Community Hospice. And, you know, she was talking about, you know, she's doing a rotational one. So, uh, she, you know, she's spending some time in different departments uh, in, you know, in the charity sector, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so, you know, please, if you have some time, please do read uh, my little article on the <laughs> misconceptions of the charity sector. Um, and yeah, you, you know, you will hear from me um, in more detail in that one and just to say so the interview the filmed interview that Kate mentioned with Simran from Greenwich and Bexley Community Hospice um, will be uploaded onto the University of Greenwich's employability playlist tomorrow on YouTube um, so yeah keep your eyes peeled for that and we will be sending out communications about that towards the end of this week um, so Belle if we come to you next yeah I think I probably actually just echo what what Kate's just said actually because there and particularly in terms of graduate opportunities there are graduate opportunities there really are and if it's not if it, it might not be you know this labeled grad scheme or graduate job you can get into these jobs you can be a project officer what you know you can be work on the program I you know I've just finished my master's I am a graduate I've managed to get a job so you know, it, 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 you can, you know, you can, don't, don't think, oh no, I can't do that, you can do that, you know, there's plenty and plenty of opportunities and ways to get in. Yeah, and I think just to add on to that, it's about um, looking at the skills that you've gained through university and any experience that you've got so far, so even if you've got, um, even if you don't feel like you've got relevant experience, there'll be so many skills and competencies that you've pulled out of out of any job that you've done or any volunteering or work experience that you've gained that can be applied to the competencies that are asked for from that job. Um, so if you are concerned or don't feel like you've got the, the person specification that a job is asking for, I would really encourage you to come to the employability service and have a one-to-one -one appointment with one of our skills advisors, particularly if there is a specific role that you want to apply for within the sector, and they can help you identify how your skills match with the job specification. Um, so Susanna, if we go to you next. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with um, what you said. I think maybe another myth is that every charity is the same or like they operate in the same way. But I think the sector is very diverse with like different goals. Every charity has different goals and they all work in different environments. I also think it's more flexible than I thought it would be in terms of like what you can do in your role. Um, it's not just like the work you do in your specific role, but you can branch out however you're interested in it if it allows. But my job so far in charities have allowed that. So I think that might also be um, a myth that you need to stay in your specific role and you not only need to do that, that job, you can definitely be flexible um, if your role allows it. Yeah, I would completely echo that. So from a previous role that I worked in at a charity, um, I, was a, I was delivering a frontline programme and I had a real interest in supporting the well-being and the mental health of the clients that I was working with. And I expressed this to my manager and I was put on well-being and mental health um, uh, first aid training to kind of fulfill that that interest of mine, which I was then able to take on to future roles. Um, so, yeah, I think there's definitely scope from my experience anyway of identifying where you want to develop your skills and how this can fit into your current role and how and how developmental that role becomes then as well, because you've got skills that you might not necessarily have had when you started that you can offer for additional capacity. Um, thank you all very much for those insights. So the next question is, we've touched on this a little bit, but would you consider building a career within the charity sector? And if so, why? So I'm going to start with Belle for this one because you are actively building a career within the sector. So if you could just give us a little bit of information on that question, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think, yeah, I would absolutely love to continue building a career in the charity sector. I think the main sort of aspect that drives this is the sort of the ability to make a difference and the reward that comes with that is just really lovely. 
Um, and I feel like it's really, it is a very beautiful experience to be able to sort of in, facilitate improving people's life, life outcomes, whether that be sort of to do with quality of life or employability skills. And I would sort of really, if you're thinking about it or being a bit hesitant, I would really urge you just to explore the opportunities um, because you know, the reward is so, so great. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so Kate, do you want to go next? Um, yeah, sure. So, sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Of course, no worries. So, would you consider building a career in the charity sector? And if so, why? Okay, so um, I definitely do consider building, um, you know, my career in the charity sector. Um, but I will be very honest. Uh, I don't know what I want to do after graduation. And, you know, I still have one year, um, my third year left here at Greenwich. Um, I don't really know where where my career path will take me, but I do 100% um, see and feel that all of these experiences that I had in the charity sector contributed so much uh, to have a much more diverse point of view and then, you know, just to realise how much more is out there or more opportunities are out there uh, for me so I can consider for my future. Brilliant, thank you. And Susanna, I know you mentioned that you are looking to build a career in the charity sector earlier. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about this, please? Yeah, so I'm definitely um, considering it. And um, my next step after uni uh, now is also working at a charity. Um, I think it's a great way to make a positive impact um, and like make a difference, like Belle said. Um, yeah, so. I got a job offer a couple of weeks ago to work at the Students' Union in the Napier University, which is in Edinburgh. So I'm going to be moving up there in May um, and continuing my work at charities for now. <laughs> we'll see how it's going to go. But um, the role is basically an events coordinator. Um, it kind of aligns with what I've been doing at the current Students' Union um, as a team leader and also, um, you know, at the internship with um, doing the marketing things as well. So yeah, I'm really excited for it. And yeah, we'll see how it's gonna go. Congratulations, that's really exciting. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased for you and I hope this this opportunity is fantastic. Um, so that kind of, we've kind of covered this already, but the final question that I've got for all of you is what's next for you? Um, so we'll start with, we've already kind of identified what's next for you in terms of jobs, Susanna. Could you tell us, so you're in your final year now, aren't you? Um, so what's, in terms of like the next few months, what have you got in store for your final year before you move you move for your new job? So my last month here is really busy. Um, I'm trying to finish up my dissertation project. Um, also have like the last couple of weeks at the mayor's um, Fund for London internship. And I'm also in Enactus, which is a society here at Greenwich, and we made it to the finals of the national UK wide competition. So we're going to be presenting as well in April. So we're currently preparing for our presentation for that. So, um, yeah, and also finishing up my work at the GSU as well, like having my last couple of weeks uh, preparing a handover plan for the next team leader if they're going to um, promote someone else to <laughs> fill my role. But yeah, just um, also trying to enjoy living in London for the last month as well. Um, so yeah. Amazing, thank you so much. Um, and then Belle, so I know that you've been working with Mayor's Fund for London for, was it six or seven months now? Um, so are there any major projects that you're gonna be working on in the next few months? Um, and just looking ahead, so after you've finished with your role at Mayor's Fund for London, what sort of work do you see yourself going into? So we're sort of coming near to the end of this sort of rotate time of the program. Um, so we're about to have the final and awards event in, on the 9th of May. Um, so that sort of has a bit of closure in that in that sense. But then um, we've got to sort of plan for the for the year ahead with the program running again. Um, I'm also going to do a project management course, so sort of further my knowledge and sort of expertise, which will be good. Um, and in terms of leaving Mayor's Fund, or when the time comes to leave or move on, um, 
I would definitely love to continue working for a charity and I think it will be um, more to, because I sort of I specialise in food and sort of food policy and nutrition it will be working for a charity sort of delivering the food programme I hope and yeah we'll just see that sounds really exciting can I just ask so the project management course that you're doing is that through Mayor's Fund for London or are you doing that externally yeah so it is through Mayor's Fund for London so another thing probably was quite nice to add is that there is actually always opportunities to further your skills um you know whether it be you know excel course project management course or anything in between there is that opportunity for them to sort of fund you doing that but you know if they don't fund you you can also sit alongside someone who can you know sort of train you we have chris who's head of the comms team at s1 for london and he's also always very willing to you know, just let people sit with him to sort of find out more info so yeah if you ever do get into the role and you're really worried that you're not good at, good at something or think good with me i need some more training there's always that opportunity perfect thank you and finally kate what's next for you um, yeah, so I mean, Val brought up a really nice point around uh, uh, training and, and, you know, Mayor's Fund for London is great with that. And even, you know, us on the youth board, we utilize that as well. So we have, you know, ability to take courses on public speaking and, and you know, mental health. So it's quite nice. So I think I will be looking into that uh, shortly as well to develop my own, own skills and my knowledge. Um, in terms of like life. Um, I am a second year advertising and dig digital marketing student here at Greenwich and will be moving on for my third year and my final year here in Greenwich for next year. Um, it was a really exciting time, uh, you, you know, leading up to to this call. But, you know, the last couple of weeks uh, I was on a conference at the NUS uh, National Conference, um, f you know, as a delegate, uh, which I was elected for uh, by <laughs> my peers here at Greenwich University. And I was a delegate as, you know, Greenwich University there, which was, you know, a great way for me to to expand my, my knowledge uh, on, you know, student union issues and, and kind of national matters. Um, and then, you, you know, really hopefully, <laughs> I mean, obviously we don't have confirmation on this, but hopefully, uh, you know, joining the youth board again for next year and then also uh, staying in my employability champion role for next year as well. Um, but yeah, those are all, nothing is confirmed yet, uh, but, you know, I hope, hope to be, <laughs> hope to be in the same role next year as well. Fantastic. So that's brought us up to 10 to 5. So I'm just going to have a look at the people that we've got in the call. If anyone has a question um, and you're comfortable putting your camera on or turning your microphone on, please feel free to do so or pop your hand up and I can work out um, who, who wants to ask a question. But you're also welcome to write a question in the chat box as well. Do we have any questions? Oh, I can see someone writing. And let me see if anyone's got their hand up. We'll just wait for any questions to come through. Um, we've got a few people typing now. Um, whilst we're waiting, I'll just ask a little bit more about the, um, did you say it's the like interviews for the youth board that you'll be doing coming up, Kate? Yeah, so one um, kind of interesting thing that I didn't even know how that happened. So that, um, when I was recruited for the youth board uh, on my um, interview panel, uh, there were people on the youth board and I, I just thought that's a, like a co coincidence on, on my interview uh, but yeah. it turned out it was for everyone else so it, what you know as kind of we mentioned co-creation a little bit earlier yeah. um, but it's you know in May years for film though that's that's huge that's really important for them so uh, you know when they did the recruitment for our youth board the people previously on the youth board were on the panel just to make sure that uh, you know they are aligned with, you know, Mayor's Front for like the values, the mission that Mayor's Front for London has. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we're coming up to uh, the, not, not even actually 100 percent sure when is the recruitment for that. Um, but, yeah, we will be, uh, you know, a part of that as well. Uh, so, you know, we can, you know, collect people like, sorry, <laughs> not collect, um, but, you know, have people who are like minded as us. 
Yeah, fantastic. Um, we've just had a question come through that says, I'm currently doing an MBA international business and I'm looking for an internship opportunity. If you can share any links to apply or or get an idea about the process, that will be helpful. Um, so at the moment, there aren't any ab um, vacancies advertised on Mayor's Fund for London website, but as Bella was saying earlier, there's no harm in getting in touch directly with the charity and kind of talking about the kind of opportunity that you're interested in, um, because that you might speak with someone who has an idea or has knows that there is an internship opportunity coming up in the foreseeable future. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend getting in touch, but I'm also going to send the link to the website vacancies page, which you can keep an eye on um, and just check that regularly to see if opportunities come up. Um, we've got a few more people typing questions. Can I just, can I just of course. Ask about um, the internship. So we will be recruiting for that in July. Um, July, I think so. I think it's July. Well, it will, we will be rolling out the sort of application process in July. Um, so if you keep your eyes peeled on the website for that, we can also share it with, we'll share it with every uni so they can promote that opportunity to you. But if you just want to keep that in mind, if you are looking to apply, we'd love to sort of receive an application and have a read through. Fantastic. And how many interns do you recruit each, each period? 30. 30. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Susanna, if she wants to, can tell you a little bit about sort of the process and what it involves. So I think there was an application form. Um, I don't quite remember. And then I think I had a CV as well. And then um, I was in, invited to um, do an interview, um, which I did, I think, was in like September, like beginning of September, end of August. Um, and then I got an email that I was shortlisted and I had to provide a bunch of documents and information. Um, just like general things for jobs, like your address. Um, a bunch of documents, basically, and then it started in October. So that was the application process, like briefly. And how did you find the interview process? Um, I honestly don't remember much about it, but, um, I think it was really good. It was an online interview. Um, I was asked some questions about like, I think there were some situational questions, like tell me about a time that you did whatever, <laughs> like those kind of questions. Um, but yeah, it was a while ago now, but I, I, I don't remember being, I don't remember being like difficult or anything. I thought it was just really nice and like conversational also like learning about the internship as well it wasn't mm -hmm. just like a one-way questions to me and I had to like answer everything uh, oh that was quite nice brilliant thank you um so we've got a few questions in the chat so one says I'm a second year adult nursing student and I'm trying to set up my own charity organization how can I get help with this? Um, so I've got an idea, but did anyone want to um, flag any ideas that they might have before I? No, OK, cool. Um, so I would recommend if you get in touch with our generator team, they might be able to support you with ideas around um, setting up your own social enterprise or your own charity. I know that they are running a session or a hackathon. I can't remember if it's a session or if it's a two day hack around social enterprises in the next few months so if you keep an eye on your emails to see if something comes through about that that might be helpful um, I know there is a big difference in setting up a charity and a social enterprise but it might be useful for getting you starting thinking about the kinds of things you'll need to set up that kind of charity organization I would also recommend booking an appointment with our employability skills advisors so I'm going to find the link for that and I'll pop it in the chat um, but if you speak with one of them about the idea that you've got and the resources that you have so far or the resources that you need, they can really look into your um, your idea and support you with the next steps to try and get that off the ground. Um, so I'll find the link for that now. Um, and then so we've got another question which says, hi, thank you for this lovely session. Do you have graduate roles or just internships? Um, so as Belle was saying earlier, like there's lots of graduate roles that aren't necessarily called graduate roles that you might be eligible to apply for. Um, Belle, did you want to just have a have some input on this one? I'll find the link for um, one to one appointments. Thank you. That's fine. So 
at the moment in, on the Mayor's Entrepreneur team, there will only be uh, internships available, but there will, I know across across the whole of Mayor's Fund, there will become, there are always opportunities that come and are available just because there aren't, there isn't one right now, doesn't mean that it won't pop up, you know, next week or, or in the future. So I just keep your eyes peeled and see. Another good uh, site I would use is Charity Job. Um, that is a fantastic site, honestly. You should, everyone should go on that. They do internship jobs, entry level graduate, all of all, everything under the sun to do with charities. So definitely, definitely have a look on there. Thank you. I'm going to put the link for charity jobs in um, the chat as well, um, because, yeah, I use charity jobs every day to do outreach for new charities that I'm working with. Oh, thank you, Sai. So um, my colleague Sai has just put the the link to book a one-to-one -one appointment with one of our um, employability skills advisors into the chat. Um, I've just seen a further question which says, I'm an MSc construction project management, um, which charity can be helpful in this area? So just, just to piggyback on what Belle said about charity jobs, I would say that's a great place to start. So look on charity jobs and maybe put in some keywords that relate to your program or the kind of role that you want to get into. So I think that's what will that's what will be impacted is the kind of role that you're looking to work in. Um, so if you start by looking on charity jobs, that can help you gain an understanding of what kind of charities are working within this area. Um, and if you look onto the websites of those charities, you'll also see information about the partners that they are working with, and that can kind of broaden your understanding as well. Um, and previously, Bell mentioned about networking and how important that is within the sector. So if you do use LinkedIn, that can be another area where you can look at, at different charities that work within construction um, to try and get an understanding of, of what the sector looks like within that area. Um, I'll just see if there's any other questions. But again, as well, I would recommend speaking with a one to one um, in in a one to one appointment with a skills advisor on that as well. So we have skills advisors for specific faculties. So, yeah, I would recommend speaking with them and say you want to get some experience with a charity. Does anyone have any other questions before we close today's session? No worries at all. Um, if anyone doesn't have any questions, you can also email me if you have any questions at a later date and I can try and find out some answers for you or I can direct you towards the, the best possible source of advice or support for that question. So I've just put my email address in the chat. So if there's anything else that springs to mind this evening or tomorrow when you're reflecting on the conversations that we've had today, feel free to drop me an email. Um, and thank you to everyone who attended today's session, but a huge thank you to Belle, Susanna and Kate for your insights and for getting involved and really helping our team to increase student awareness and understanding both of the Mayor's Fund for London, but also working within the charity sector. Um, I can see from the comments in the chat that the students that are available today have found it really useful. And I know that this conversation will be really useful for students across the university once we can publicise the um, recording of today's session. So thank you all very much and we look forward to welcoming you back onto campus at some point.